Thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, we're going to get started right now. Uh, everybody's hopefully had their refreshments. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order of our annual meeting of the Delray Beach Historical Society of June 22nd, 2022. Winnie? Thank you, John. Can you, can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the 58th annual meeting that we've had with the Historical Society. Can you believe that? 58th Historical Society gathering of the, gathering of the membership. Uh, my name is Winnie Edwards, and I'm the executive director. I've been the executive director at the Historical Society for seven years, and my job is a true joy and a privilege. It's great to see so many of you here tonight. I see so many great friends, and we're happy to have some city people here. Thank you, Ryan Boylston, for coming, Commissioner Boylston. We have Jeff Orris, Assistant City Manager. Um, Kent is here, Sustainability Officer. Thank you. We finally connected um, last week. And our good friend Alexina from the CRA is here. Hi. hi. Thank you for coming. Um, one other special guest that surprised us tonight is Bob Ganger. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know Bob Ganger, but he is the reason why we, one of the reasons why we have the Delray Beach Historical Society. He's so in, important to the organization and its beginnings, and it's a great honor to have you here tonight, Bob. Thank you. Um, oh, that noise. Maybe I need to stand away. Okay. Um, Anyway, I'm looking forward to the year ahead, and um, I'm looking forward to retiring the word pivot um, as we're emerging from um, a few difficult years. I'm grateful to be uh, surrounded and supported by this incredible board that I have the privilege to work with, many of whom I can call friends and a couple that I can call old babysitters. Um, I'm most, uh, most blessed and, and happy that I get to be surrounded by my coworkers and team Shannon and Tom and Dan and Liz and Christina are here tonight, and you'll hear more about this distinguished group a little bit later. Um, tonight, the board is going to review our financial status with you, and our president will um, give a State of the Society address. You will help elect the new board slate tonight, and then I'll return for a few presentations. On your chair, you'll find um, the current board and candidate bios, as well as our current membership list. Um, this is an image montage of the last two years, because last year we met on Zoom, and it wasn't all that fun. And um, we wanted to show you what we've been up to the last two years, and you'll hear a little bit about that tonight. Uh, now I would like to introduce our treasurer, Sylvia Picaro. Thank you, Winnie. Wow, it's great to be here. Great to see everybody here. Um, before I start, I want to give a shout out to Winnie. She's, she was working all day getting all this together, and she was afraid it wasn't going to come together like it did, and it wasn't going to look good. But doesn't it look great? Yeah. Thank you, Winnie. For those who don't know me, I'm Sylvia Picaro, and I'm the treasurer of the Historical Society. My father, Bill Gwynn, was a founding member of the, of the Historical Society, along with the fathers of Howard Ellingsworth, Winnie, and Laura Simon. It seems only fitting for us to carry on their legacies by serving on the board that preserves the beautiful city we love and have known our entire lives. To start, I would first like to share briefly what happened at the start of the pandemic and where we are today. As is the case of many nonprofits around the country, as well as right here in Delray, it's been a very challenging two years financially. We were fortunate to receive two rounds of the PPP assistance, which helped with our payroll costs and other items that qualified. While remaining sensitive to the environment around us, we limited our fundraising and were unable to hold events. However, we remained open safely to the public and offered the, to the community unique free exhibits and creative programming that were enjoyed and appreciated throughout this difficult time. We slowly emerged with the rest of our community, picked up our fundraising, and received two generous gifts. A wonderful and longtime friend of the society whose family dates back to the 1800s sadly passed away. Mr. Dwight Bradshaw graciously bestowed $144,000 from his estate to the Historical Society 
over the course of the last two years. In addition, the Walter Bryan estate bestowed $25,000 to the Heritage Garden. These thoughtful and generous donations helped the society during a challenging time and have given life to many of our important long-term initiatives. We are grateful to both families. This year, we are proud to report our financial status is good. Our bank, our bank balance as of the end of the fiscal year, September 30th, 2021, was 487000 This is an increase of 175000 from the prior year. We received 63000 in sponsorships, 34000 from the President's annual appeal, membership dues of 47000 and unrestricted contributions for the, for the year of 112000 we are grateful to our yearly sponsors, many of whom have supported us for years. Thank you to the Colony Hotel, our Sterling Society sponsor, who just renewed another year with $15,000 donation. <laughs> our expenses remain close to prior year, with our staff costs aligned with our budget at $132,000. We also incurred much needed expenditures of additional archive, archive storage, technology and software upgrades, heritage garden expenses, and a new website. If you get a chance, please visit it. We're really proud of it. For the period ending September 30th, 2021, our total income was $396,000 with total expenses of $285,000. We are grateful to the City of Delray Beach and the CRA who continue to support our mission and award us grant funds based on our contributions to the community. We were awarded $50,000 from the City and $75,000 from the CRA. Our five-year management contract with the City expired on September 30, 2021. The City, however, renewed our contract for another five years and awarded the Historical Society $100,000 for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2022, which includes partial funding to be put towards an archivist. We will be required each year to give a status presentation to the City Commission and to discuss funding requests. As most of you know, we just held our premier fundraiser of the year, Twilight in the Garden. Thank you to all who attended. It was a great time. With ticket sales in the auction, we were able to raise $41,000. We are excited about our Legacy Brick Program, which is a wonderful way for you to be part of Delray history well into the future. Please consider making a commitment tonight at the sign-up table over there. We are looking forward with optimism to the future with our membership stronger than ever. To help fund our growing educational programming calendar, we are creating new revenue streams such as historic bus tours, a gift shop, a full lecture series, and more of the exciting fundraising events that we've become known for. We are proud of how we pivoted during the pandemic, supported our community, and rebounded with the support of friends, members, and sponsors. So tonight, I join my fellow board, me board members and the staff to say thank you, and thank you again for being here tonight. <laughs> Any questions? We'll address that in just a little bit. Thanks, Alex. Okay, now it's my honor to introduce our esteemed president, John Miller. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, thank you so much for everybody for coming tonight. Um, good evening. This is our first in-person meeting in three years. The last one we had was when I was um, put in as president, and so I only have to do this one. So, um, you know, I would like to thank all of our members who are here tonight, the ones that can't make it, that are traveling. You, you guys are the essence of our organization. This is your historical society. We collect, document what came before us, as well as capturing what's happening now for future generations. This thing is really echoing. We could not do it without your commitment and support, and we thank you. Before I get into that, 
what I'd like to do, and before I talk about what we've been doing for the last two years, I want to brag a little bit about our staff. Maybe bring it closer along. Closer? Yeah. All right. So when I mention your name, if you could please stand up and, you know, raise your hand. Running a small, non-healthcare, non-virtual, non-toilet paper supplying nonprofit <laughs> that primarily operates face-to-face -face in small enclosed areas during the worst public health outbreak in the last century wasn't easy. But Winnie Edwards and her team made it seem so. Winnie is our executive director, as you've met before, and she's starting her eighth year here. She is our only full-time employee, and when the world stopped in 2020, she rallied the troops. She has put together an amazing team that includes Dan Kowalski. Dan? She's our, our grounds manager. Shannon Ewing. Shannon? Our development and program administrator, Tom Warkey. There he is. Tom's our archive coordinator. Liz Bold. Liz. Our event coordinator. And newest to the team, Christina Buckley. Christina. She's recently started as our contract accountant and is modernizing and updating our accounting processes. This thing working? Good. Awesome. Between this dedicated group and a lot of enthusiastic board members and volunteers, we not only survived as an organization over the two plus last years, but we thrived. Winnie's imagination and vision and passion kept the spirit of our mission alive, and with everyone's help, we never closed our doors. Pivoting doesn't even come close to describe the contortions that Winnie and the team went through, not only to keep the lights on and the operation running, but also deal with the new challenge that were forced on us almost overnight. A huge part of the attraction, the enjoyment, the spirit of being part of the Delray Beach Historical Society is the social nature of what we do. We share stories, attend meetings, we plan and host events, we enjoy exhibits, we speak to groups, and on and on, all of which stop dead in their tracks. Through a lot of creative thinking and hard work, we continue to serve and contribute to the community through all the ups and downs and uncertainty. And because of that, we've emerged stronger, more vibrant, and more community focused. I'm not going to lie, it looked bleak for a while. And as I'd only been in the role a couple of months, I thought to myself, you know, what have I gotten into and how's this going to work? However, we counted our pennies, we cut back on everything, we drew up contingency plans, and we held our breath for a few weeks. We then kind of took a look around at the new landscape that we were faced with and asked how could we do our part with what resources we had to make this situation a little bit easier on everyone. I'm proud to report here tonight that the Tory Beach Historical Society has had a very good year and we are on the road to recovering from what can be characterized as one of the most tumultuous times in our towns and our nation's history. One of the most important projects we started at the beginning of the pandemic, which continues today, is our COVID Delray Beach documentation project. From the start, we've been collecting essays, stories, poetry, art, pandemic items, which are now artifacts, and photos, all representing what happened in Delray Beach to our residents, our frontline workers, our families, our hospitals, and our schools. Years from now, this will be fascinating to study and learn from as the world has, will have changed. Uh, connecting with the community is just as an important part of our mission uh, as recording what happens around us. Our restaurant give back program in December of 2020 helped local restaurants during the pandemic. We built a free 1,000 image outdoor history exhibit on our campus for the community to enjoy safely during the 2020 and 2021 season. During spring and summer, we created take home nature and history kit camp kits for local families stuck at home and with over 100 of them given away as scholarships. We raised, raised 24,000 for the local artist community last May with our Preservation Month Art in the Garden show. 
Last November, we invited local artisans, artists, and purveyors to exhibit free on our campus on Black Friday as part of the Shop Local initiative. We partnered with the library on a pen to pandemic creative writing contest. We collaborated with the Arts Warehouse to exhibit the history of Haitian migration to Delray as told through an artistic, historic, black and white photography exhibit. Just this last April, we built a 640 square foot booth and history exhibit at the Delray Fair. Uh, we have participated in the last three art and jazz events put on by the DDA. And we have continued our free outdoor movies on the lawn over the last two years. Throughout the pandemic and today, we continue to work on our one acre, 100% native educational heritage gardens. And we have raised over $60,000 for this effort. This has been a labor of love for our volunteers, including members of the Garden River, the Garden, Grass River Garden Club, Michael Lorne, Gary Gerlach, Carr Twilliger, Jeff Nurge, Connie Lyons, Monica McLean, our grounds manager, Dan Kowalski, and Winnie Edwards, along with lots of other volunteers and board members who were, have given their time to make this happen. I'm incredibly proud of this rare and important green space in the middle of our downtown, and it's an important part of our legacy that we are building for Delray Beach. It's an outdoor classroom that will live on past our lifetimes to teach visitors and residents about pioneer life, sustainability, and conservation. We just completed a sold out four part garden lecture series in May. We couldn't be happier with the impact this is having as many of the attendees are transitioning their yards to Florida native landscaping. Not only is the Heritage Garden becoming a destination and an asset for Delray Beach, but I'm also proud to report that it's been selected to be included in the Florida Native Plant Society's statewide tour this year. Our garden has also received acclaim from the Garden Club of America. The Grass River Garden Club generously awarded the Historical Society a grant this year for an additional $5,000. And Whitty Edwards, on behalf of all volunteer and staff efforts, received the Civic Improvement Commendation at the Grass River Garden Club's annual meeting this spring. Other highlights and accomplishments that I'm pleased to report include an increase in our group and to school tours and programs over this last year. We are especially dedicated to connecting with the education community and local youth and consider this to be one of our most important legacy building efforts. We're also launching new ways to share and learn our history. One is a documentary, a documentary series that will be available very soon called Delray Beach Historical Backroads. This is an extension of our ongoing oral history project and will be a fun, easy, and accessible way to share our history as we visit sites and locations around Delray Beach of historical or cultural significance and the fascinating stories and people behind them. There will be a lot of surprises. And in just the next two months, you'll see pieces on the uh, Historical Society's historic cottages, the Spady Museum, the Williams Cottage, Cathcart House, the two Delray American Legions, the LaFrance Hotel, the beach monuments, including the Inchulva Wreck, Gleason Rock, and Anchor Park, and much more. This will launch on our YouTube channel and social media and be hosted and narrated by people from our town, including students and youth. We created a screening room inside Case and Cottage to show our documentaries and films that coincide with our exhibits. Along with the Spady Cultural Heritage Museum, we will be launching historic bus tours of Delray Beach, Alice. <laughs> we have been preparing for a year for this, and we have our script written, and we have our route done, and we are ready to go. However, the recent spike in gas prices and a in general increase in overall costs have forced us to get creative and revisit this new offering. We are looking for sponsors. If anybody is interested or has any ideas, please talk to Winnie. <laughs> Since the worst of the shutdown has passed, we've seen an increase in our attendance of our two permanent history exhibits and our most recent World War II Delray Beach Homefront exhibit. This exhibit documents the events and people of Delray Beach during World War II and has been one of the most visited and appreciated exhibits in our history. Please see this exhibit before it closes at the end of the summer. We welcome the Delray Beach Police Department, the Delray Beach Fire Rescue, and the Rotary Club for special tours and an opportunity to view displays that we created especially for them about their organization's histories. Our overall membership is up over 10%. 
We've made several on-site local history presentations to HOAs, local clubs, businesses, groups. Uh, and if you would like us to come to your organization that you belong to outside of this group, please reach out and we will be happy to do so. Our new website launched the last time, since the last time we met. It's imaginative, fun, educational, easy to navigate, and very story driven. Thank you to Winnie Edwards and the team at Green Group, and we hope you visit it soon. We're continuing to build out our gift shop that will offer a full range of gifts, books, uh, books arts, apparel, and more. Since hands closed, obviously you need a place to come and get your Delray stuff. Well, <laughs> now you have it. Uh, one of our core missions is the city's archive, and it has grown significantly with over 3,000 new items donated in the last two years. This is creating opportunities, albeit challenging, for us to evaluate the current archive layout and structure. We've invested in new shelving and preservation materials and have secured an off-site air conditioner storage facility to house these items that are less fragile or less rare. We're replacing, replacing older software and tools with updated versions, and we're reorganizing our indexing system to keep family collections together and put frequently accessed artifacts, documents, and images together, such as real estate, development, architecture, building, and neighborhood history. Our research request services not only stayed healthy during the uh, pandemic, but has increased by over 10% as well. We'll be making a few more significant changes to our process and our staffing soon as well as our archive services as our responsibilities grow. In December, we hosted our first holiday party in two years. And just about a month ago in May, we welcomed over 300 people to our premier fundraiser, Twilight in the Garden. 13 of our local restaurant partners donated staff time, food, cocktails, and created an extraordinary and beautiful event. With two live bands, our history exhibits and gardens open, we had an auction, we had a great time. I want to thank everybody who purchased tickets and supported us in this, in this event. We raised over 41000 for society programs and the archive. Our future is bright. Our mission is important. As Delray is rapidly changing and growing, you can look across the street and see what's happening there. It's important that we continue to educate the community and newcomers about our history and how important it is to us. Heritage tourism is a significant and vital economic driver in Florida. We are here to tell our stories and share our history to all with your continued support. I'm so excited to see the enthusiasm amongst our board members and our new members that are joining our efforts. We have very much to look, very much to look forward to. We have a new history, uh, natural history exhibit, a robust hit local history lecture series, conservation programs and lectures associated with our heritage gardens, our documentary series, more oral histories, an expanded city archive, broadening our community outreach, including on-site and school tours. The relevance and significance of local neighborhood stories and diverse community voices drives our mission. We're bringing back our Wise Elder Circle, Art in the Garden event, the Fall Fest, you can count on us for more outdoor movies, fun fundraisers, programs for kids and adults, summer camp, new book club, and partnerships with the city CRA chamber, library, Spady Museum, Sandaway House, and more of our other nonprofit and conservation friends. I would also like to shine a light on the city of Delray Beach and the CRA and our yearly sponsors, many of which have been with us for over 10 years. Your support helps us run our organization day to day and provides access to the time, space, and talent we need to create our programs and implement them. We are so very fortunate that our city and CRA recognize the significance and importance of the Historical Society's contributions to the community. Both the city and the CRA provide opportunities for us to apply for additional funding, and we are grateful. Speaking of fundraising, and uh, Sylvia mentioned this earlier, Come over here and visit our Legacy Brick program and sign up for a brick or two or three. It's a great way to leave a message and a legacy for future generations. Local historical organizations like ours do not just document the major events of the past and advocate for the preservation of documents, photographs, and architecture. But they're also critical to understanding the forgotten truths and often overlooked stories that explain so much of what we see around us. Whether it be the history of your own family, the town you grew up in, 
the city that you live in now, I strongly encourage you to dive in and start digging. I guarantee you will be amazed at what you discover. History is about people and the changes they make to themselves and their surroundings. Why did they come here? How did they come together as a community? What were their daily struggles? And how does all that stuff that happened so long or not that long ago continue to influence us today? What would have happened, for example, if Sarah Gleason and her two friends hadn't donated the 20 acres that they did, which is now Delray's public beach? What would Delray look like if in the 1970s, Delray voters hadn't advocated for building height restrictions? How different would the vibe be downtown if city leaders hadn't fought state plans to four-lane Atlantic Avenue all the way to A1A? Or if a group of community activists hadn't come together to save an empty, closed, run-down public school that has sat in the center of our town? Or, for example, how much better off would Delray be? How much better off would Delray be today if so many of our citizens had not been excluded from equal opportunities or prevented from fulfilling their true potential by the color of their skin throughout the past? There have been plenty of successes over the last 125 years or so of this town, but plenty of failures as well. And they all deserve truthful, honest recognition, acknowledgement, and examination. When organizations like ours can uncover and share these obvious but often overlooked or ignored lessons from the past, we add to our collective experience as a community. Out of this starting point, we get shared understanding. And when people understand the whys and hows of where we are today, then it makes it so much easier to work together to make Delray Beach the best it can be. Thank you for your support. So, thank you. I now have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Mike Cruz, who is our current secretary, but not for long, to facilitate the election. All right, well, thank you for having me. Uh, this is the first time we'll be doing these in-person elections since we haven't been doing this for a few years. So basically, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce our current board members. So, that was nice. So uh, I'd like to have the current board members uh, stand up just for a moment so everybody can, can see who you are. Uh, first would be Aaron Beck, uh, Kevin Bennett, uh, stay standing, Kiara Clark is not here. Uh, David Cook is not here, I think. Uh, Joyce DeMoose. Howard Ellingsworth. In the back there. Ingrid Lee. Mr. John Miller. Steve Miskew. Sylvia Picaro. Hillary Roach. Susanna Shubin. And somewhere, there she is. Roy Simon. And Laura Simon. And Tracy Baker. Sorry. Of course, Tracy. Did I forget anybody else? Okay. So that's our current board members. And what I'm going to do now is read and have stand up the current candidates for uh, our open positions. Uh, we also have two members that are stepping down, and they are Vicki Sachs and Alice Pierce. They were uh, board members for a couple years each, a few years each, and they are designed to step down. So I'd like to thank them. And then for the incoming board members, I'd like to have Larry Butel stand up, and I'll read a little bit about his, his bio. <clears throat> Larry uh, has been employed as a sales rep for the National Federation of Independent Business since 1999. Uh, NFIB is a nonprofit organization that advocates on behalf of America's small and independent business owners, both in Washington, D.C. and all 50 states. He grew up in Elgin, Illinois, 
a suburb of Chicago and later moved to Florida to attend the University of Miami. He graduated in 1989 with a Bachelor's of Science degree and after graduation he spent 10 years working as an environmental consultant before joining NFIB. He and his wife have been married for 30 years, Karen, and their son Jack has a, attended the University or is attending the University of Florida Law School. Uh, Jack has been a um, a volunteer here for many years. Um, the Butels have lived in Delray for over 20 years and all of them have, have volunteered for many times here. So I would like to get a motion for Larry to be a board member. A second? second. All in favor say yay. yay. Any not in favor? Good. All right. <laughs> Welcome Larry. <clears throat> Next is Kristen Finn. There's Kristen. Kristen uh, moved to Florida from North Carolina in the late 1990s. She fell in love with Florida's lifestyle and decided to make South Florida her permanent home. Kristen acquired her real estate license in 2003 and with her then boyfriend, now husband, Johnny, purchased their first home together in 2004 in the historic Del Ida Park neighborhood of Delray Beach. They have a beautiful daughter, Ava, who will turn 15 this summer. They also share their home with Bo, the Labradoodle, Carl, the rescued cat, Milo, the leopard gecko, Alberto, the albino frog, and numerous fish. <laughs> Kristen and Johnny are members of St. Joe's Episcopal Church, the Surfrider Foundation, and the Delray Beach Historical Society. They have committed themselves to the per preservation of their 1925 home and take great pride in living on George Bush Boulevard. Kristen also currently serves on the Historic Preservation Board for the City of Delray Beach. Can I have a motion for Kristen's membership to the board? Thank you, Roy. Second. All in favor? Aye. Great. Welcome, Kristen. Second is, or third on the list is Connie Cook Lyons. She's not here tonight, and she has a really long bio, so I'm going to kind of <laughs> shorten it a little bit. <laughs> Connie is 60 years old and a third generation Delray Beach native. Uh, she is the oldest daughter of Lonnie and Mary Ellen Cook. Uh, David Cook, another member, is, his, is her brother. She went to Atlantic High and graduated in 1979 and left to go to college at TCU. Um, she worked in Fort Worth for six years after college before relocating to Miami. <laughs> uh, she's great. She vol there she is. She, she volunteers here a lot. She's done a lot for the Native Gardens. She's been a Delray local for her whole life. Uh, I have a motion for her second. second. All in favor? Aye. All right, great. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, next on the list is Monica McLean. Here's Monica. She is a full-time resident of Delray and has been a member of our historical society for over four years. Upon joining, she immediately became involved with events such as the Twilight in the Garden, the Halloween Party, and the Christmas Party. She, is, she assisted with the assembly of the summer camp sack stuffing during the pandemic, as well as solicited support for Speak Up for Kids so that kids in the foster care system were able to receive summer camp activity sacks. Monica has been an active participant with the Heritage Garden since their planting. This past winter and spring, Monica, along with Connie, partnered with their peers at the neighboring nonprofit Swinton Community Growing Project to hold the Smart Gardening Lecture Series. Monica will continue to be an active member of the Heritage Garden Committee as we enter the next phase of developing the educational kiosks. Monica has a keen interest in history and values the importance of preservation and accessibility to the community. She understands and supports the mission of the DBHS and appreciates the efforts and dedication of the DBHS, DBHS staff. Second, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Great. Next is Miss Paula Rocker. 
Here's Paula. <laughs> Paula Newman Rockers, co-founder and president of the Carver High School Historical Preservation Society, dedicated to the preservation of black history. She is also a past member of the Delray Beach Historic Preservation Board. After 26 successful years with AT&T, she retired and has been dedicated to workforce development and historic preservation. Delray Beach is her hometown, and she has a three-generation lineage in this wonderful city. She is driven by what was, what is, and what Delray is becoming. Could I have a motion for her membership, please? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Welcome, Paula. Last is Ann Whitehead. There's Ann. Ann. Prior to relocating to South Florida, Ann developed a high level of experience in both the domestic and international financial markets and business communities with a wide range of expertise in complex financial transactions, including mergers and acquisitions, project finance, and strategic alliances involving multiple parties. As an associate at Shearman and Sterling, she primarily represented the Anglo-American Corporation and its sub subsidiaries, including De Beers Diamond Mining Group. At Skaden Arps, Anne was active in the firm's general mergers and acquisitions practice, including structuring complex transactions and business combinations for many high-profile clients, clients, major investment banks, and private equity firms. Anne has served on the advisory boards of several nonprofits, including the Freeman Spogli Institute for International Studies at Stanford University, the Board of Trustees and Overseers of the International Rescue Committee, a term member for the Council on Foreign Relations, a trustee of the Whitehead Foundation, chaired by her father, the Honorable John C. Whitehead, and several organizations dedicated to land conservation and historic preservation. Anne received her Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science with distinction from Stanford University and her law degree from the George Washington University Law School. Anne has been an ardent supporter and member of the DBHS since 2014. Could we have a motion for her membership, please? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. You're involved. Okay, and next I'm going to announce the executive team changes that the Board of Governors will be uh, doing this year. Uh, John Miller, who you just heard from, he becomes past president on the, and, but stays on the executive team. Uh, myself and Joyce DeMoose will be co-presidents. Joyce, could, could you please stand, Joyce? Thanks, Joyce. Uh, vice, pre vice President will be Kevin Bennett, stand up Kevin, and co-president co is David Cook, who's not here tonight. Secretary will be Ingrid Lee, and that's it. That's the new board. <laughs> so uh, that's the new slate, and now I'm going to hand it over to Winnie for some final words. And treasurer returning, Sylvia Picaro. <laughs> Sylvia oh. Picaro. Oh. <laughs> that was my fault. I... Um, hello again. Um, this is my opportunity at the end of the annual meeting to um, thank our volunteers that are really the lifeblood of the organization. We have so many great volunteers. Um, they do all kinds of things, and you know who you are because a lot of them are here tonight. They stuff letters. They help with prepare for events, oftentimes in the heat. They paint. They do accounting work, um, grant work, gardening, archive work, organizing, labeling, docenting at our exhibits, um, and many, many volunteered during the pandemic. Uh, my first thank you goes out to the board because the, this is a volunteer board, and all of them give of their time and talents and their passions. And it's been a pleasure working with you all. This is always the sad part for me at the end. I just, I don't know why, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but it's been great working with you all the past seven and a half years. So I look forward to the future. Um, so we have some, some, a few gifts for um, some of our volunteers that are, are here tonight. We have a lot that are not here. So our first gift goes out to Elliot Diaz. Come on up. Um, that's Elliot, Elliot with one L. Elliot with one L. One T. And uh, one T. Um, he came into our lives a few years ago, and he's always ready to lend a hand. Uh, during the pandemic, he helped assemble hundreds of camp kits for families. Oh, you guys can't miss the end. Don't leave. The end is really, really great. Um, I scared him away. Okay. Um, he stuffed a lot of your membership renewal letters. He's helped on the campus with various, ta various tasks, and he also volunteered this past Delray Affair, got up at 5 in the morning, and helped us build our booth. Did you all see our booth at the Delray Affair? Yes. It was, I mean, that thing, it was unbelievable. And I, I have to tell you, it was bigger than my apartment. My apartment <laughs> my apartment, 620 square feet, and our booth was 640 square feet. So um, I really enjoyed myself. <laughs> Um, but um, thank you, Elliot, for all your service to the Historical Society, and um, thank you. Um, so, Colin Hicks, uh, he's really new, like we barely know Colin, but he's made such an impact already. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, he's the grandson of Arthur Sprott. Does that name sound familiar to anyone? Okay. Oh, it does? Oh, uh, Mr. Simon knows who he is. Um, he's fairly new to town, and uh, he visited our exhibits one Saturday, and we quickly signed him up as a volunteer. <laughs> and um, he worked five hours straight at the Twilight in the Garden um, event selling, <laughs> selling bricks. I totally forgot about him. And um, he didn't have a break. There was no break. And he was so gracious enough at the end of the night to say, whatever you need, I'll come back and I'll volunteer anytime. So thank you, Colin, for your interest in what we do. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, they are. Okay. Um, this is the gift, by the way. And there's a funny story about this image. This is not. This is very rare. This, I know you've seen something like this around town, but this is very rare. Um, this lady goes back a long way. She entered our lives several years ago as we reached out to do some research on her relatives for a video. We quickly connected, and now she's part of our family. We enjoy her drop eyes. Now she knows who she is. Where is she? We enjoy your drop eyes. Yes. See, she's looking around right now. Um, uh, we quickly connected. Now she's part of our family, and she's a wonderful volunteer. She's also the president of the Delray Beach Women's Club. Her name is Joycelyn Patrick. And, by the way, by the way, um, the Women's Club used to be the Ladies Improvement Association, which started in 1902. This is, an or this is the oldest civic organization in Delray Beach. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and we are going to be partnering with the Delray Beach Women's Club next year for Real Men's Bake. So Real Men's Bake is going to, like, blow up. So we can't <laughs> wait for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, this brilliant and kind lady walked into my office four years ago and inquired about volunteer opportunities. <laughs> and our staff fell in love with her, and she's become a great friend and volunteers at the DBHS almost on a weekly basis when she's in town. She's also been instrumental in our Heritage Garden Progress and organized our garden lecture series. I'm also thrilled she's a new board member now. Thank you, Monica McLean. <laughs> <laughs> she gets two gifts. It's an inside joke. Um, okay, so this uh, beautiful and wise lady is also a brand new board member, but she started out um, as a volunteer and one of, one of ver a great value as a community connector, a researcher, and an editor. She has introduced introduced us to new families in the community, gathering stories, correcting facts. Um, <laughs> Nailing down biographies and names, and she does it quick. Like, if I need to figure out when somebody was born or who was somebody's cousin, she's right there. Um, she was instrumental in helping us with um, our World War II exhibit. She has a ton of passion for local preservation, black history, 
all history in her hometown, and we can't wait to work with her. Paula Rocco, we're honored to have you on our board. Thank you, Paula. Okay, so it's now time for a little special recognition, part of the evening. And um, I want to shine a light on a very feisty, hardworking, <laughs> passionate, and caring lady that has been volunteering at the Historical Society practically since she moved here in New York, from New York in 2004, almost 17 years. She said that one of the first things she did when she moved to Delray, she said, I'm going to associate myself with the local historical society. She values local history and education, and it shows in her work uh, when she is with us at the Historical Society. For nearly 17 years, she has been overseeing the artifacts, sorts through endless photographs, labels, items, and boxes, organizes voluminous amounts of documents and newspaper clippings, all the while reading and understanding exactly where those things go. It takes so much patience to do something like that. She works every Friday, and we look forward to Fridays when she's there. Paula Arias, thank you for all that you do. Another person that couldn't be here today is um, Billy Jo Swilly, B.J. Swilly. Her history goes back 70 years or so, and she was one of the original, one of our original members and part of the Seacrest High School alumni group with Mr. Roy Simon. And since I've worked here, she has volunteered at almost every single event. She's worked in the archive. She's conducted research for us. She's a leader in our wise elder group. Always volunteers at the Dore Affair. She exemplifies good old Delray, but still has more energy than anyone I know. Images of her cheerleading at school as a young girl or holding fish in a bikini on A1A in the 1940s have adorned our exhibits, and I actually think a few of those are hanging at the Delray Hideaway Bar, if you'd like to go check those out. <laughs> and um, I know this is being recorded tonight, so I just want to thank you, BJ, and um, we'll make sure that we give you your gift um, upon your return. Thank you. And um, quickly, I, I want to thank the volunteers that couldn't be here tonight. Carol Anderson, Arlen Dominic, Michael Lauren, Gary Gerlick. Michael Lauren and Gary Gerlick have been instrumental in our Heritage Garden. They volunteer every single Wednesday in the garden. Um, Marisol Williams, Connie Lyons, Diane Haynes, Kathy Baldwin, Irene Robinson, uh, Jessica O'Neill, and of course, BJ Slowly. Thank you, guys. <laughs> lastly, lastly, John. Lastly, our outgoing president is a very special person to me and to our board and to Delray Beach. Um, he has the biggest heart, and he loves his hometown and his family. Um, sorry, <laughs> I told you I was going to do this. Um, he's a great fisherman, a master carpenter, a great writer, a great thinker, and he's a lot of fun to be around. He always has a smile on his face. And he sees the bright side of everything. He's been a great boss. And he's taught me a lot about patience. Um, he's given hundreds of hours to the Historical Society. He has built structures. He has built museum cases. He's cleaned. He's gardened. He's repaired. He attends meetings on our behalf. He advocates for us. Um, he raises money. He researches. He helps with the press. Whenever a newspaper or a TV station shows up, I call him, and he reluctantly comes. He's been on so many TV shows and so much newspapers, I can't tell you. Um, he does interviews. He's a great storyteller. He's a master storyteller. Um, he's helped us with videos. He signs letters and checks and always provides guidance and exemplary leadership for the last three years. Spearheading a nonprofit during a pandemic was not easy, and I feel lucky and honored that I had a partner in John Miller. There he is. <laughs> I plan 
that. Um, thank you, John, for your service. You've made a tremendous impact on the society and Delray Beach. Um, John, your passion for history, storytelling, and your strong belief in legacy building is why we are giving you this gift tonight. And so as you know, where some of you know, um, Ryan Boylston should know, and I know Mr. Orris knows, and maybe Kent knows, maybe some other people know, we are working on building a children's garden patio that's part of our new driveway parking lot project. We've been working on it for quite some time. We will see it finished. It's going to include benches and landscaping, and some of the pavers as part of our brick program will be engraved. But the patio will be built in honor of your service. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, like I said, this we're, we're going to build the patio in honor of your service and dedication to the Historical Society and your love and passion for local history. And the fact that it's not built yet is very fitting because John taught me about patience. And so we're going to be patient. We're going to wait for the driveway and the parking lot. And then we're going to build our beautiful patio and we're going to dedicate it to John. Good things are worth waiting for. So I ask you for patience until we've filled this. Thank you, John. All right, I'm going to, I lost my cheat sheet, but I do believe I need to pass it, the, pass the meeting on to the new presidents, Joyce DeMoose and Mike, Mike, um, Mike Cruz, the new presidents are going to. I'm going to let Joyce talk since I've talked too much. I, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you again for coming, being a part of this very dynamic, small, but big impact organization has been an honor. And I know everybody in the audience feels the same way. Also want to thank the library for their assistance this evening. We really couldn't have assembled this large group without their help. So with that, we're ready to adjourn the meeting. Oh, the I, just, I want to thank uh, Matt Sturgis is here tonight. Does everybody know Matt? Yeah. I'm sorry to intrude. I just, I, I wanted to make mention, um, he's been one of our in-kind sponsors for eight years. Um, he donates a lot of his time to the Historical Society. He photographs all of our events and helps us a lot with digital and, and tech stuff. And he's here tonight filming this event. So I just wanted to say hi, Matt, and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> The meeting is adjourned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>